Namaste. Well, we've been talking in this series about mukti. And what is mukti really, again? <laughs> mukti means to realize, I am not this body. I am not this mind. I am pure consciousness only. And this consciousness does not need an object. This is Turiya. Turiya is beyond what we know as ordinary consciousness that has an object. It's consciousness without an object. This is pure consciousness or awareness. This is Brahman. This is to realize that Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman. And this is, of course, the realization that was discussed by Shankaracharya in his wonderful commentaries on Vedanta and other works. The question then arises, what's next? So, okay, I've realized that I'm pure consciousness, that I can exist in a void. Huh? This is the whole point of the Devi Kalotra Tantra, which we made a whole series on. <laughs> that I am Brahman, I don't need anything. I'm completely independent, self-sufficient. And I am alone. There is no other. One time, Ramana Maharshi was asked, How should we treat others? His reply, There are no others. <laughs> See, this is Ananya Bhakti. It's another series that we've done. Ananya Bhakti means love of the self. And of course, the self is myself and yourself, the self of all, Brahman. So this is generally known as Kaivalya. So this is supposed to be the ultimate state. But again, the question arises, is, is this the end? Do we just like merge into nothingness? That sounds awfully boring and static. I don't think anybody really wants that. Even though they may take a pose philosophically that this is the ultimate and this is the most desirable state. I don't think anybody really wants it. And I think that's one reason why they don't pursue it avidly. Why we see, for example, the neo Adwaitans that pretty much embrace this idea that mukti is everything, kaivalya. But they don't pursue it. They don't do sadhana, they don't do worship. Uh, it's simply an intellectual exercise for them. And their real, actual realization is that, well, now I'm God so I can do whatever I want and have any kind of sense gratification, whatever. So this is not right. And the reason it's not right is that in Shiva Purana and the Upanishads and Vedas, of course, that Kaivalya is not really the ultimate state. Moksha is not the end. It's really just the beginning. Because now we've realized, okay, I'm spirit, I'm pure consciousness, I'm not anything like this body or this mind or my activities or my karma or whatever. In fact, this whole idea of I as an individual being is completely bogus. It's just, it's software. It's just an, a pattern or an arrangement of thoughts and identifications and attachments. So this I business, this individual existence, is really unnecessary. And when we reach moksha, we let it go. Now, what is the experience of moksha? This we haven't talked about much. But in the actual realization of moksha, 
one not only realizes that I am consciousness, what I used to call I, and I just use the word I conversationally as a linguistic phrase, uh, but not in the original or uh, common meaning of the term as an individual. I'm just using it because trying to speak English without using it is very difficult. So anyway, once I realize I am pure consciousness, I also have to see that everything else, all those others, are also pure consciousness. This is an overwhelming experience. I had this experience in 1984. I was blessed by Shakti. Shakti appeared to me in her invisible form, but I could sure feel her presence and her energy. And she touched me right here. <laughs> Gave me Shakti Pat, opened the Agnya Chakra, and suddenly I could see everything is Brahma, everything is consciousness, down to the rocks and stones, everything. And I don't want to dwell too much on this, but unrealized human beings appeared like cardboard cutouts, completely phony, unreal. But birds and trees and plants and like I said, even rocks and, and the very air itself, everything is conscious and consciousness alone. This is Brahman. This is the ultimate ground of being. So then, did I simply merge into Akasha and disappear? <laughs> no. I'm still here. Hi. So what does that mean? And by the way, this has happened to a lot of people. A lot of people, especially who have done intensive meditation practices, um, which these days is mostly followers of Buddha's teaching. And when they have this experience, man, they don't know what to make of it. <laughs> They're expecting to simply become nothing. Instead, they become everything. <laughs> So, what is beyond mukti? And the example is given that when a person realizes the self, what I really am, they become eligible for salvation. Mukti means salvation. It means the end of birth and death in the material world. And it has five different forms or degrees. And the first degree is called Salokya. Salokya means to take a form, to take an embodiment, to become present in the same worlds as the Supreme. So this means that one approaches the Lord in whatever form one realizes the Supreme and lives on the same planet or the same loka, the same world, the same cosmic level as the Supreme. And of course, this existence is unlimited because it's completely spiritual. Some people get this all backwards, and I think it's because they haven't realized it. That once you realize moksha, then you understand, oh, this isn't the end. This is just the beginning of real life knowing who I really am. So now what? And I always used to ask the question, what do you want to do with the rest of eternity? Because now eternity is yours. You don't anymore have to change from one body to another. You can have a permanent identity. So what is that? Uh, what is that uh, permanent nishta state? Uh, that means that you never have to change identities again. So this is the real self. This is the real identity. But what identity can we have? Well, our identity then can only be in relationship with the Supreme. 
in relationship with the Supreme Brahman, or God. So that means mukti. First of all, I live on the same planet as God. Salokya. And the next is sarupya. Sarupya means I have a form which is of similar quality to the Supreme. Beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, with full strength, eternal life, great intelligence, great power, all mystic powers, and all enjoyment, all pleasures of the spiritual world. Well, then what? Is there a state even beyond that? Samipya. Samipya means I have an eternal relationship with the Lord, with God. As an admirer, a servant, a friend, a parent, or a conjugal lover. And the conjugal lover state or relationship becomes very important because the next stage beyond uh, samipya is sarshti. In sarshti, I develop an intimate relationship with the Lord. Now, in, in these other relationships called rasa, there is some distance. There's some foreground and background. There's some a uh, little formality. Relationship means a different uh, set of values for one and the other. Like one, God can be the master and I can be the servant. Or God can be my friend, I can be his friend. But there's still, he's the supreme and I'm his friend, but I'm not the same. And so on, up to conjugal love, Madhurya Rasa. In Madhurya Rasa, the difference is almost nil. One becomes intimate. And even as a friend, or as a parent, or a servant, one becomes an intimate friend, intimate parent or servant. Very, very close. Practically no difference at all. And finally, the ultimate is Sayuja. I'm looking at my list to make sure I don't skip any of these because I get too wrapped up in it all. <laughs> Sayuja means to merge into the existence of the Lord, to lose one's different individual personal identity, even the eternal identity, and become totally one with God. And this is different from Kaivalya although it's sometimes confused with Kaivalya, because in, in Kaivalya one has no identity. But in Sayuja, one's identity is, I am the Supreme. This is not something to be imitated, and it's certainly not something that is simply the result of some intellectual exercise. It's not something that can be a, realized in a weekend workshop. It's something that is realized in the spiritual realm, beyond this material world, long after this material body is dust. And it is the ultimate form of relationship where God and I become one. So these are the five stages of mukti. And we discussed this in an earlier video. And we're going to discuss it again soon in the Shiva Purana series because it comes up in the third chapter of the Vidyeshwara Samhita, which we're going to cover in a couple of days. So I just wanted to mention this, that moksha is not the end. Moksha is really only the beginning of full enlightenment and self-realization. Aum Tatsa, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya.